Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Christocentric family. Welcome to the broadcast. Abel Damina is my name. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. And I'm so excited that I'm able to bring the word every day. This year, we're very committed to equipping you. Remember what God spoke to us as the year began. Consecration, more consecration, much more consecration. And this becomes a reality by feeding you quality food so you can you know, be equipped to be able to take the message of Christ to the dark places of the earth. This is going to be our year of bringing the gospel louder than ever before. And I want to thank God for every one of you that is committed to this vision of reintroducing Jesus to this generation. Getting people of God out of religion and, and all kinds of, of, of false and fraudulent gospels going out. And not a gospel actually. And we're committed to just the gospel of Christ. Which is the only gospel that God has made available to mankind. I want to encourage all of you to do a favor to me. Invite more people to the platform so that they can come and be fed and be equipped with the word of God. Let me also mention that uh, if you live in a place where there's no power city campus, and you want to start one. A campus is an extension of our church where people are taught, people are fed, the sound gospel of Christ, and people are given an opportunity to grow in the knowledge of Christ. If there's no one where you are, you want to start one, shoot us a mail today. Or you don't have a church where you attend, a local church, Many of you follow my teachings don't have a local church because where you were before is no more, you're no more blessed there. You don't have one, but you want to connect with brethren who are feeding from this same source, from this same word. All you need to do today is send a mail to me indicating your interest to be a part of our Power City campus with the details of your location. I will be glad to respond to you with every information you need to be a part of what we're doing. Make up your mind to make this year count for you. This is a year of spiritual and, you know, world impact. That this year you will do ministry effectively and bring the love and the life of God to a people that have never known him before. And I'm excited, friends. Expecting to hear from you today. The word is going to come with power. And I'm going to take you right into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. Turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse number 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The mission of the scriptures is to make you wise. Wise, not just wise, but wise in the issues of salvation. There's a borderline. The borderline is it's able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It makes you wise unto salvation through the faith that you get from the message of Jesus Christ. So therefore the scriptures are given to us to make us wise. And that's why as a child of God, you must be very committed to the scriptures. You must make up your mind to be a committed student of the scriptures. Jesus said to them, you do err because you know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. So the knowledge of the scripture is equivalent to the oppression of God's power. If you want to see the power of God in oppression in your life, you must be a student of the scriptures. This morning I was sharing and I said, God doesn't speak to you. He doesn't speak to you in any form other than the written word. God has decided that his medium of communicating with man is his word. So when God wants to talk to you, he talks to you through his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word is God. So if God wants to talk, he doesn't talk to you primarily through visions and revelations and images. He speaks. God wants you to know him in the written word. He wants you to know him in the written word. That's why he has, he has, he has, he has brought himself together within the confines of his word. If you want to know God, you know his word. If you don't know his word, you can't know him. There's no other way to know God outside his word. Visions and dreams are secondary. And the word of God can cancel them. It doesn't matter how you saw them. 
Even if your two eyes were open, you saw vision like you see television. If it contradicts the word of God, is Satan deceiving you? Because everything is subject to the word. So you don't even need a vision once you have the word. If you can see the word, you don't need a vision. You don't need a dream. Somebody say, I saw Jesus in a vision. The person that understands the word is better than a man that saw Jesus in a vision. Because even Satan can appear in a vision with the form of Jesus. Okay, how does Jesus look like? How does Jesus look like? How does Jesus look like? He never painted pictures of how he looks. He only gave you his word to reveal him. So when people say they saw Jesus in a picture vision, how do you know it was Jesus? Have you seen Jesus before? Is there anywhere they put a model picture of Jesus and say, when you see things like this, it is Jesus? There's no such place. So anything can appear in a, in a, in a picture and tell you he's Jesus. But nothing can fabricate the word. Anything can appear. All those pictures you see of Jesus of Nazareth is idol worship. It is people in, in, in the Jewish town that they snap their picture. Nobody has a picture of Jesus. Why? Because he doesn't want you to know you, him in pictures. He wants you to know him in words. I'm teaching good this month. He wants you to know him in words. He wants you to know him in written words. John 5 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify or give evidence or they give a witness of me. So to know him, you know the scriptures. You know him in the scriptures. Jesus is revealed in the scriptures. If you don't know the scriptures, you can't know him. To know him, you must know the scriptures. And to know the scriptures, you must be taught the scriptures. There's no use carrying a book you have not read. And that book is a hallmark of your salvation. And you have not read it. It was given to you to read. The Bible is not books. It's a book. It's a book. It's called the Holy Bible. Not Bibles. It's a book with one message. So to know the message, you must read all of it. Because the message is spread across the 65 books in the book. So to be able to get the complete picture of the message of the Bible, you have to read the whole book. Because the whole book is a book of the story of Jesus. The scriptures testify of him. For in them you think you have eternal life. In Luke chapter 24 verse 25. The Bible says Jesus looked at them and said. Oh fools and slow of heart to understand. All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things. And to enter into his glory. That is a summary of the prophets. What they said is that Christ will suffer and Christ will enter his glory. That is a summary of the Bible. The message of the Bible is the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. And because they didn't know what he was talking about, the next verse 27, I'm beginning at Moses. So Jesus had to do Bible study. He had to do Bible study. And to do a Bible study, we must be detailed. There's patience required. There's time required. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? You, you, can't rush, you can't rush your Christian life. You have to be patient. You have to sit down. You have to spend time studying and learning. It takes time. And it takes patience. We must go beyond the level of looking for excitement in church and begin to look for growth. That's why in this church, I'm, I'm not bothered about exciting anybody. I want you to grow. And if you're going to grow, you must remove excitement. A child that plays too much cannot pass exam. A child that will pass exam, TV must be off. All the gadgets that make a child play must be taken. The child must concentrate on the books. It's not exciting, but if the child stayed there, the child will be excited in the future. Am I talking to somebody here? So I'm not about to make you jump and shout and throw like, eh, eh. I want you to grow. Somebody say, I will grow. That's the mission of this thing. That's the mission of this thing. I know how to make you shout. I know how to make you run. Look, I can preach out of your seat. You won't know when you have left your seat. But after the day, you only be excited without growth. I want you to grow. Because the mission of the church is for you to grow. You grow in grace. You grow in knowledge. And to grow, excitement must be removed. You must focus. Because it will take you a lot of seriousness to grow. Am I teaching here? Children that like playing don't pass exam. <laughs> they don't pass exam. Mama had to tell my daughter, look, baby, when it's school time, no gadgets, no television, no movies. 
you focus. The girl doesn't like it, but she has to. Because she has to pass her exam. I don't want a daughter taking 25 out of 26 and coming back to say, Daddy, my result is very big. 25. It's not one, it's small. 25. I don't want that kind of twisted mindset. I want my child to take one. Yes. And if the child is going to take one, there's a, there's a level of excitement the child cannot be exposed to. There's a level of excitement. Same thing with spiritual growth. If you're going to grow spiritually, there's a level of excitement you can't be exposed to. So you can grow. And if you're exposed to that excitement, you can't grow because you can't have the two together. So that's why we're in school right now because I'm going to get into some very, very deep things today. Woo! We will learn some things here. Amen. Who will learn some things here? Who will learn some things here? You know, one of the undoings of the church is excitement. Churches are too excited for growth. You know, people just get excited. They dance for hours and get tired. When it's preaching time, they are sleeping because they are tired. When you dance, 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 and sweat and sweat and sweat, there's no way you can sit down and be concentrating. Too much excitement. So people are not growing. So churches are full of babies all over the place that cannot stand on their own and defend themselves. And if we're going to grow, we've got to pay the price of cooling down and focusing. You must know what is important to you. You must begin to prioritize in your life. You must know the things you should look for and the things you shouldn't look for at this level of your Christianity. Because you will be exposed to other people, go to other churches, and they'll tell you we were praising for three hours. I danced till I forgot myself. You'll be exposed to such people and they will tell you. And then you remember that in your own church, we don't even pray for up to one hour. And we don't dance and forget ourselves because we are always in a mode of learning. But two of you, you and that person that is dancing three hours, if they leave two of you in an island, you will survive. And that person will not survive because that person does not have the in, in, inbuilt capacity to survive. Am I teaching here? So you must value. You must value the things you are getting above excitement. You know, you must value them. Let the excitement be in the fact that you're growing. Let the excitement be in the fact that you're learning. Let the excitement be in the fact that your eyes are opening to the depths of God. Let the excitement be in the fact that you are understanding the things of the spirit. Let us be spiritually minded people, inside out people, not outside in people. It's very important. And I know why I'm taking time to emphasize this because some of us came from excitement things, you know. And uh, we really like excitement because excitement feels you, makes you feel good. But feeling good does not overcome challenges. Feeling good does not overcome challenges. Okay? Beyond feeling good, you've got to know. And to know, you've got to pay the price. He began at Moses. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets. So look at Bible study. He took, the, he took time for this kind of teaching. Moses, all the prophets, major and minor, he expounded unto them in some of the scriptures. All the scriptures, my friend, that is not something you rush. That is something that takes hours. All the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Jesus is the message. The entire Bible is a compilation of one story, Jesus. The prophets, Jesus. The Psalms, Jesus. Moses, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's about nobody else. John 1 45. Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus. The writings of Moses and the writings of the prophets, everything they were talking about, it was an attempt to communicate Jesus. So listen to me very carefully. The Old Testament is called the scriptures. The scriptures, the Bible is not the scriptures, technically. Technically, the Bible is in compartments. The Old Testament is called the scriptures because when Jesus told them in John, search the scriptures, there was no John. When Paul told Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration, there was no Timothy. So, they were all referring to Genesis to Malachi. So, Genesis to Malachi is the scriptures. So what is Matthew to Revelation? Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel 
and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So the New Testament is called the revelation of the mystery. So the Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. So you cannot see Jesus in Exodus. You cannot see Jesus in Leviticus. You cannot see Jesus in, 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 in Deuteronomy. You cannot see Jesus in Jeremiah. But you can only see Jesus in those books when you look at those books through the eyes of the New Testament because the New Testament is the decoder of the codes in the Old Testament. You decode the codes of the old by the New Testament. Because it's just one message. Everybody's talking about Jesus in different forms. And these codes are decoded in the New Testament. So the New Testament is a revelation of the Old Testament. To understand the Old Testament, you must learn the New Testament. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Please follow me. So in the first service, I began to deal with a particular issue that has been an issue in the body of Christ. And I want to doctrinally, intellectually, intelligently, and scripturally cure that problem once and for all for you and for those listening to me wherever they are listening. And it's the issue of the cause. People talk about causes. People talk about the cause. They will tell you your cause. That's why when you put money in business, it does not work. They'll tell you you're under a cause. That's why everything you're doing is not producing. Preachers have done whole seminars on generational causes. Symptoms of generational causes. And it's a long, age-long problem. This issue of cause. So for the first time, let's deal with this issue doctrinally, scripturally, intelligently, and intellectually. Let's look at this subject very critically in light of Jesus. Now let me say something very quickly. Every time you're studying the Bible, you must study it in the light of Christ. The reason why there is heresy is that people are attempting to interpret the Bible outside Christ. If you read the Bible outside Jesus, you will get into error because the entire message is Christocentric. So to be able to uncode the message of scripture and make it produce for you, you must see it in light of Christ. The scriptures are not written about you. The scriptures are not written about you. The scriptures are written about Jesus. The only time you have a place in the scriptures is when you get into Christ. When you are in Christ, then whatever the scriptures talked about, Christ affects you. Outside Christ, you're on your own. Outside Christ, you're on your own. So therefore, in order for us to demystify these causes and demystify this word called the cause, we've got to go by what uh, Bible interpretation calls the law of first mention. Because in the interpreting of scripture, there is a law, a fundamental law, you must never forget. It is called the law of first mention. What it stipulates is that anywhere a word is first mentioned in the Bible, it carries with it the original meaning of that word. So, the first time the word cause was mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. And if you see the word cursed, it's past tense. It wasn't God causing the serpent. It was, he was not talking to the serpent as a causative, but as informative. It was not God causing God was only informing the serpent about the serpent. Cursed. So it's not God that caused the serpent. God only revealed to the serpent its state. Please follow me carefully. Cursed above all cattle and above all beasts of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and thou shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Next verse. And I will put an empty between thee and the woman. And between thee and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Next verse. Unto the woman he said. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. Next verse. And unto Adam he said. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. And hast eaten of the tree. Of which I commanded thee saying. Thou shalt not eat of it. You ate of the tree. You are the one that ate it. And because you ate of that tree, cursed is the ground. 
he didn't say i am causing you by eating of that tree you activated a law that brought a cause i didn't cause you so man is the architect of his problems cursed and that curse there is his past things he didn't say i will cause you or now i cause you it's a cost that means this cause is already in effect before i'm talking i'm just informing you of what is going on cost is the ground for thy sake and please let me quickly put it here god didn't say i cause you man and even the cause god didn't say you are cost he said the ground is cost for your sake so man was not cost but the ground and the ground was caused in response to man's action please get it in perspective cause is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life 18 tongues also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. Alright, now listen carefully. Genesis 1 and 2 are the most perfect books in the Bible. There are only two negative words in Genesis 1 and 2. Darkness and die. The earth was without form and, and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's the first negative word. The second negative word is in Genesis chapter 2, where God said, the day you eat it, you shall die. Those are the only two. All the rest are positive words. But from chapter 3, we now see 3, we see eat, we see die, we see fruit. That's all we see. And those words are fundamental. And what I want to do in this service here, I want to unlock those words. So you can get some revelation on our way to harvesting answers. Because all you keep seeing in Genesis is 3, eat, fruit leaves die so many people have concluded that adam ate that is why man is in trouble they ate so now we want to unlock this thing that has to do with eating and trees and fruits and leaves and die are you ready now i needed to know that god deals with words so because he deals with words we must look at the word to find clearly what actually happened in genesis we must look at the word moses wrote the book of genesis Moses wrote the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and those books are called Moses. Beginning at Moses. When you read beginning at Moses, he's talking about the first five books that Moses wrote. Moses was not there when the Garden of Eden happened. He wasn't there. Everything Moses wrote was given to him in a vision. So, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Moses wrote it by his understanding of the vision he saw he wasn't physically there okay so based on what he saw he wrote now you must remember that when moses saw that vision and wrote the revelations of scripture you must understand that moses was up for 40 days and 40 nights with god and he had insight into the things he wrote inside so let's see how moses wrote hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 god who had sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past the word diverse manners is a bible language which means types and shadows it's not diverse like different different manners uh -uh. It's types and shadows. That's the interpretation of that word in the Hebrew. Diverse manners means types and shadows. So, the Old Testament is a record.
record of types and shadows. And the New Testament in verse 2 hath in this last day spoken unto us by his son. So the New Testament is the substance. The New Testament is not types and shadows. So Hebrews 1, 1 is talking about the Old Testament. Hebrews 1, 2 is talking about the New Testament because the New Testament is the revelation of the message in a person. The Old Testament is the message communicated in types and shadows. Okay. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as moses was admonished of god when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mouth according to the pattern now this scripture in hebrews 8 the writer of hebrews was quoting from exodus 25 40 because the new testament was always written in reference to the body of truth called the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the scriptures. Is the embodiment of truth. And every writer of the New Testament took the Old Testament and unveiled Christ. So that's why they keep quoting. They keep quoting from the Old Testament because that's why you have the embodiment of the truth that is revealed in the New Testament. Please, if you're hearing, shout, I hear you. Is a, is a body of truth. So this is quoting from Exodus. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee on the mouth. That is what the writer of Hebrews was quoting from. Somebody shout I receive. Understand it. Can I hear you shout it very loud? So now Moses built a temple. A tabernacle. And the pattern for that tabernacle was shown to him on the mount. That means the tabernacle Moses was building was a, a copy of another tabernacle he saw. That tabernacle is in heaven. So God showed it to Moses in a vision and asked Moses to try and interpret it. So the tabernacle Moses built on earth was not the exact. Because the materials that were used in heaven are not on earth. No manufacturing plant can produce the kind of materials he saw. So the best he could do was to look for something that tries to illustrate what he saw. So what he saw cannot be in reality replicated here. He can only try to give an idea of what he saw. If I'm talking, say I hear you. All right. So the tabernacle Moses showed us, we saw tab uh, table of shoe bread, we saw golden candlesticks, we, sh we saw, uh, you know, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, we saw the mercy seat, we saw the altar of incense, we saw the brazen altar and the brazen lava. All of those were the things in the tabernacle. We saw the outer court, the inner court, and we saw the holy of holies the segmented tabernacle because that's what he saw in that vision and then he used natural elements like wood like uh, like uh, vessels of silver and bronze to try to construct what he saw in the spirit but you must also remember the limitation of moses because even though he saw it in the spirit he didn't see it in its clarity because of his state the state of Moses at that time was that Moses was a spiritually dead man. And a spiritually dead man cannot fully receive the perfect image of the spiritual. Because a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. He may second guess them, but he may not be able to give us the exact interpretation of what he saw. I'm teaching here. Moses was a it's a dead man spiritual. Somebody say, what do you mean? How can you call Moses a dead man? Romans chapter 5 verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to who? So Moses was in death. He was a spiritually dead man. He was under the reign of death. 
So everything he saw, he saw it as a spiritually dead man. Because Moses wasn't born again. You have to be born again to be spiritually awake and alive. I just wanted to clarify that so that you have it established. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So now God told him to build according to pattern. What is the meaning of the word pattern? It means a shadow of heavenly things. Build according to pattern. Build according to a shadow of heavenly things. So there are three words in Hebrews 8.5. Number one, there's pattern. Number two, there's shadow. Number three, there's example. Those are Bible words. They are not English words. So don't think of English interpretation. Those are Bible words. Now so let's open up. The first one is example. God wanted Moses to write, to, to produce an example of what he saw. What's the meaning of the word example? In the Greek, it is hypodegma. It is spelled as H-I-P-O-D-E-I-G-M-A. Hypodegma. H-I-P-O-D-E-I-G-M-A. That's a Greek word for example. It means something that suggests. Build according to the pattern as an example that is give the people a suggestion of what you saw because i know you can't replicate it so let it be suggestive that's the meaning of the word example something that suggests the word example also means it means figurative not actual give them a figure give them a figure because you can't give them the actual the actual is in heaven. The best you can give them on earth is a figure. So, the tabernacle Moses built and the things Moses said we are figures. They were not actuals. The things Moses said were suggestive. They were not the real. Please, this is important because it will help you with studying the Old Testament. Thank you, Lord. What about pattern? The word pattern means figurative, like a figure of speech. Figurative. Example means something that suggests. It is also figurative. In Hebrews 9.23, you see that word used again. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heaven should be purified with this, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. So the pattern had a type of the better. In heaven, the better. The earth was a type, a figure, a symbol. Let me give you a little, a little help here. In the Old Testament, when people sinned, they brought goat. And the goat was killed and the blood was offered. But the blood of goat could never take away sin because it was a pattern it was a figure it was a shadow in the new testament jesus became the lamb behold the lamb the lamb is no more an animal it's a person because this is the real of the shadow the shadow is animals the real is god himself manifest in flesh there's no way what Jesus will offer can be compared to what goats are offering. So, there's no way the things you saw under the pattern, the examples and the shadows can be compared to the real which is the revelation. That's just to help you. Just an example there. I'm going to dig deeper now. Are you with me? If you're on the same chapter, because I'm going deep now. If you're on the same chapter, I shall praise the Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. So pattern therefore means pattern and shadow is used to make a distinction. The word pattern and the word shadow is used to make a distinction between heavenly things and spiritual realities. Heavenly things and spiritual realities. So there's a heavenly description of spiritual realities 
heavenly description. So we look for something in the natural that explains the spiritual, but it can never be the same. That's the meaning of shadow. Something in the natural that tries to explain the spiritual, but it can never be the same. So by implication, therefore, Papa, what are you saying? That the writings of Moses in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, we are shadows, figures, and examples. So to say that when you see three, there may have been no three. So the three may have just been a figure, a shadow. Or for English students here, a metaphor. Moses wrote with metaphoric and literal expressions. So in Bible study, you must decipher between the metaphors and the literals to be able to get the message. You must know where is the shadow. And you must know where is the example. And you must know where the patterns are. When you understand that, you can now, in the light of Christ, understand what Moses was trying all this time to communicate. Because Christ now is the explanation of all the efforts of the Old Testament prophets, law, and the Psalms in trying to communicate Christ. If you're with me, shout I hear. Okay. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited because so much is going to happen in your life. Amen. Amen. The word shadow means, in the Greek, it's actually the word skia, S-K-I-A. That's the meaning of the word shadow in Greek. It means skia, S-K-I-A. Skia is a feminine word, and it is used for thick darkness. Shadow means there is darkness. There's a darkness in the shadow. There is no shadow that does not have darkness. So when you look at a shadow, a shadow does not give you the complete picture. In every shadow, there's darkness. There are dark spots. I'm teaching here. Yeah, wherever there's a shadow, there are dark spots. And because of the darkness in a shadow, when you see shadow, you need light. Anywhere you see shadow, you need light. So that light can expose what is behind the shadow. Because it is what is behind the shadow that is real. The shadow can never be real. The shadow is a caricature of the real. I'm teaching here. If you understand the shout, I hear you. Now, touch, hold your neighbor's right leg or whatever. Hold your very tight. Tell your neighbor, when you see a shadow, look for light. Hold your neighbor's leg. Well, I know why I'm saying what I'm saying now. When you see a shadow, look for light. So in Genesis chapter 3, you see shadow. You don't see exact picture. You see shadows. Because what Moses wrote was shadows. Patterns. Mm. Are you with me? You're about to know that your Bible like the one who wrote it. I'm telling you. See, there's nothing like knowing the scriptures. That's where power is. Ah, when you know the scripture and somebody's talking gibberish, even if it's a reverend doctor, you look at his color and say, I just respect your color, but get out what you're saying. Does not make sense? Yeah, let no man spoil you through philosophy and vain, 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 vain deceit. You've got to grow in grace. You've got to know what the word of God says about, about God and about you and about Christ. So that no devil can mess around. Let me tell you, the greatest person Satan is afraid of is a man that understands the scriptures. That's the most, that's the biggest terrorist. He's more dangerous than ISIS. Boko Haram is a child's play. A man that knows the scripture is a commander. He's a commander. Satan can do nothing about you. And nobody can do you. No, as they are trying, you're looking at them from afar. You're telling them all this thing you're doing, I'm seeing you get out. Why? Because you know the scriptures. Somebody shout, I hear. I hear. Say, I receive, I receive. Revelation. revelation. Can I hear you say it very loud? I receive, I receive. Revelation. revelation. 
John chapter 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, look guys, all of you are in the same state where Moses was. There are things I want to tell you, but you can't handle it. It's too deep. Even if I tell you, you will just hear and go. Because you don't have the capacity to understand it. Many things. Then Jesus added the light. Now, next verse. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Ghost is not the message of the church. The Holy Ghost is not the message, but he's the conveyor, the teacher. And the revealer of the message. It's not the message. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He won't speak of himself. The Holy Ghost is not here to reveal himself. He's here to reveal Christ. What he shall hear he shall speak. Only what he hears. And what he's hearing is not him. Because he is not here for him. Mm -mm. He is here to unveil Christ. So the Holy Ghost is not the message. But he is the conveyor. The interpreter. The teacher. And the revealer of the message. Am I talking to somebody here? Next verse. Verse 14. He shall glorify me. This is Jesus talking. For he shall receive of mine. And shall show it. So the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Is to download Christ. And reveal to you. So if you are truly a Holy Ghost man. You won't know Holy Ghost. You will know Jesus. You will know Jesus. Because he's not here to talk about himself. He's here to take Jesus. And reveal. Because the message is Jesus. He shall take that which is mine. And shall show it unto you. Verse 15. All things that the father has are mine. Even the things that the father has, they belong to Jesus. Huh? Therefore, said I, emphasis, that he shall take of mine. This is Jesus talking. I shall show it to you. What will the Holy Ghost do? He will reveal Jesus. He will reveal Jesus. I said to people who call themselves prophets, I said, if you're really a prophet, your prophecy will reveal Jesus. The hub of a prophet is not revealing you. You're not his message. I see, I see. I was in your village. He's a, he's a local prophet. He's a village prophet. It's not a Bible prophet. A Bible prophet cannot do better than the Holy Ghost. What who anointed you a prophet is the Holy Ghost. Even the Holy Ghost himself will not speak about himself. The, the central focus of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. So if a prophet is anointed by the Holy Ghost, the message of the prophet will be an extension of the message of the Holy Ghost, which is what? Jesus. Which is Jesus. Remember, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the spirit that prophesies through a man has one testimony to deliver. Jesus. Hmm. Are you hearing me? It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. You shall take that which is mine and it will show you. Why is the Holy Ghost important? Because the opposite of the shadow is revelation. See? Shadow, darkness. The opposite of shadow is revelation. What is revelation? Illumination that exposes the substance behind the shadow. That's revelation. The illumination or the light that exposes the substance Behind the shadow. So now, in the light of the Holy Ghost, when you look at the Old Testament, you don't see animals, you see Christ. 
When you see the blood on the doorpost of Israel, you don't see goat blood. You see Jesus. Why? Because now, beyond the shadows, you are seeing revelation, which is the light that exposes the substance behind the shadow. Am I teaching? Yes, sir. Listen, it has always been God's plan that Christ be revealed from the beginning of time. From the beginning, that's been the plan. The revelation of Christ. But because the kind of people that were after the fall of Adam didn't have the capacity. So when God communicated to them, because of their lack of capacity, the best they could receive was shadows, figures, and examples. First Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Which eye and which ear? The eye and the ear of the Old Testament people. The eyes of Moses couldn't see. The ears of Moses couldn't hear. The best they could see and hear were shadows. Because they lacked the capacity to take the substance. And that is why their communication was in shadows. That is why all you will see, the best Moses could give to us. I'm getting there now. The best Moses could give to us, the best he could give to us, was that there was a tree, there were leaves, there was fruit, there was a serpent, and there was a dying. That's the best. And some eating. Nothing more. Because he was talking in shadows. So now, if we're going to understand tree, eat, die, fruit, leaves, we have to release light. When we shine light on these elements, the substance behind the elements will be revealed. Then now, we will see beyond leaf and see what was really there. Because then, because it is shadow, it means that there was no leaf. It means that there was no tree. And it means that there was no eating. Yes, sir. But there was a dying. So now it's a combo of metaphors and literal. And we have to have light to decipher the metaphors from the literal. And then look at the metaphors with light to see what really was behind the metaphors. John 16, 14. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Revelation 15. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He's a revelator. He's a conveyor. He's a teacher and the unveiler of the message. Jesus. He's not the message. That's what John the Baptist said. I am not that light. But I came to be a witness of that light. I'm just a messenger. My job here is to witness that light is coming. And then Jesus showed up as the light. And the entrance of his word. Because he is the light. When he enters via the instrumentality of the word, light shines. I'm teaching here. So as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ear heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things which God has prepared. This scripture is not for you. This scripture is describing the state of Moses and his colleagues. It's not you. They didn't hear. They didn't see. And it couldn't enter their heart because they were dead. But for you that is born again, verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by correct it's revealed to us it's revealed to us by the spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God it's not like the things are deep it's just that man's ability to understand is such that even the casual things God says are deep 
It's not like God went and hid the thing in a deep place for you to search. Uh -uh. It's just a revelation of man's capacity. So that's why they are deep for a man. Do you understand? But a man that has a spirit, those things are no more deep. Because the spirit now opens it up and it's no more deep. It's like you bring somebody that's never given his life to Christ, has never been to church, and he's hearing me teach what I'm teaching now. He'll just be looking at me. The only thing the Holy Spirit will be doing to him is making him keep seeing Jesus in different places. So that when I say, if you want to be born again, come out, he can come out. But the rest of the message, he won't be able to handle it. But as he keeps coming, after being born again, his capacity begins to open up. Then what I'm saying begins to register. Because the Holy Spirit now is helping him to see into the deep things of God. Am I teaching here? Please, if you're hearing me shout, I hear you. I hear you. They are revealed to us by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. The revelator. The conveyor. The interpreter. And the teacher of the message. Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And this verse of scripture is quoted from Isaiah 64 verse 4. It was a prophetic scripture of the prophets. The spirit searches. The word search means to discern, to clarify. The spirit clarifies or discerns the deep things. They are hidden things. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It is this wisdom of God that the Holy Ghost is opening up that will glorify us. That's where our glory is. Our glory is in this wisdom. Let me show you another one. Colossians 1, 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Look at the next verse. Oh, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation. He's talking about in Old Testament. All the Moses, Elijah, this mystery was hidden from them. But now it's made manifest to his saints. Where are the saints? The mystery is made manifest to you. Somebody shout, I receive the revelation of the mystery that Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nehemiah, all of them, they couldn't see it. But I am privileged. I see it. The mystery that they couldn't see. I didn't hear your amen. amen. It was hid from them, but now it's made manifest to who? His saints. Where are the saints in this church? Wave your hand and shout, a saint is sitting here. Alright, verse 27. What is that mystery that was not revealed to them? To whom the saints... God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What is the mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Where is Christ? Where is Christ? He's in you. That's the hope of glory. That's the mystery that Moses could not understand. So when Moses was speaking about a day when Christ will be in people in the form of a tabernacle. Moses didn't know what he was talking. But Moses was prophesying. He was prophesying about this mystery that he couldn't explain. And today what is this mystery that Moses prophesied? He was talking about God's presence living in a tabernacle. And anywhere they, they, they pray and pointed to that tabernacle, they won battles. When enemies come against Israel, all they need to do is find the position of the tabernacle and raise their hand in prayer. As long as they make contact with the position where the tabernacle is, nobody can defeat them. And in that tabernacle is the Ark of Covenant. And if the battle is in a far place, they carry the Ark and put it in front of them. They defeat all their enemies. So their winning card was not weapons of war. It was the Ark of the Covenant. Now today, there is no physical Ark. There is no physical tabernacle. Your body is the temple. Christ in... That's the mystery that they couldn't see. But now it's revealed. Woo! I am that tabernacle. Remember I told you the tabernacle is in three parts. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. Spirit, soul, body. 
your body outer court your soul in court your spirit holy of holies and god said i will live in them i will walk in them so when battles come you win battles because you are the ark of covenant when anybody fight you you overcome them because you are the ark of covenant agabo shatana am i talking to somebody now you see in the old testament it was a shadow in the new testament is a revelation given to the saints and what is that mystery christ where in you the whole sit down let's talk a little more are you understanding these are the things we are studying the bible when you see them alone you just stand up and start jumping as if you are not normal because you're actually not normal sometimes i just see them and i go my mom say what is it i say you can't understand she said i understand i know you have got something i'm so excited because i can see that mystery you see gives you victory over battles because that mystery is light and once the light shines and you can see no darkness can fight you am i talking to somebody to whom god will make known the mystery which is christ in you the hope of glory ephesians chapter 3 verse 3 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. The mystery is revealed by revelation. As I wrote afore in few words. I wrote about this thing in words. That's why the way to understand God is words. Words. You know him by the written word. You know sometimes they tell you, imagine Jesus on the cross. That's idolatry. Don't imagine any Jesus. When you want to think about Jesus, think of words. Take the scriptures, put in your head and think about scripture. Don't be thinking of one funny Oyibo man on top of cross. That's not Jesus. That's idolatry. If you really want to think of Jesus, take his words and think about because he is his word. He, he speaks words. He wants you to know him in the written word. That's why you and your Bible must become friends because that's the only way you can know God. You know him through his words. As I wrote a four in few words. Whereby when you read. You may understand my knowledge. In the mystery of Christ. But you have to read. It's written. You have to read it to, to understand. You have to read to understand. That's why we're having a lot of reading in this house. Because that's the way we are understanding. Hallelujah. If you're growing shout Hallelujah. Look at the book of Luke 10, 21. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. What Moses couldn't see, small people like us have seen it. <laughs> God kept it away from all these big, big fathers of faith. Father Abraham, Father Moses, Adam, Adam, Isaiah, Ezekiel, by the words of my mouth there shall be no rain and the heavens close. Yet he didn't know mystery. Daniel, I will not bow. Lions then he came out. Yet he didn't know mystery. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fire couldn't burn them. Yet they didn't know half of what you know. Jesus lifted his hands and said, Thank you, Father, that what these big people couldn't know, you have revealed to babes. You have revealed to little children. You have revealed to little children. You know why you're called babes? Look at me. People like Moses, them live for 200, 300 years, 150 years, 900 years. You, nobody here is up to 90 years. So we are babes. We are babes. Compared to them. I mean, where, where is your age? Compared to a man who lived 800 years. When he stands with you, can you talk? He will tell you, when I was 350 years. <laughs> You will tell him, I am just 45. You will say, babe, you get waka. And yet, when you sit him down 
at 700 and you say, the mystery, the mystery that was not revealed to you is revealed to me. What you were trying to say that you were fumbling in types and shadows is Christ in me. Eh, yes, write down. They take notes. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, that you have had mercy on these babes and you have revealed to them what the old men cannot see. So if Elijah comes here now, he will enter foundation class. Because Elijah cannot enter this service, he will be totally confused. So we have to take him through kindergarten class and give him certain teachings first before we give him this lecture. Why? Because he never had an idea of what we're learning now. 22. All things are delivered to me of my father. And no man knoweth who the son is, but the father. And who the father is, but the son. And he to whom the son will reveal him. Nobody can know the father except Jesus reveal him. Jesus is the exclusive custodian and the exclusive owner of the father. And he only reveals to those he wants. Next verse. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see these things that you see you know why next verse for i tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them but you are hearing it blessed are your ears blessed are your eyes hey, blessed are your eyes blessed are your ears where is the amen coming louder blessed are your eyes Blessed are your ears. Blessed are your eyes. Blessed are your ears. Blessed are your eyes. Blessed are your ears. They see and they hear. Somebody shout, I am blessed. I see and I hear with understanding the mysteries of the word of God. I didn't hear your amen. They were talking in shadows. We are talking in reality. What a blessing. So now, let's open something and close. Are you ready? So let's listen to the Holy Spirit describing to us what happened in the Garden of Eden. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So Adam didn't eat tree, and Adam didn't eat fruit. Adam sinned. It was seen. Adam saw trees and leaves. But now by revelation, Paul is telling us the real thing that happened. It was not trees and leaves and eating. It was seen. One man sinned. How do we know? Same Romans revealed by the Holy Ghost. Chapter 5 verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience... The word disobedience is the same word for unbelief. Unbelief. Adam was in unbelief. God told Adam something and Adam did not believe. Adam rejected Jesus. Adam did not have faith in Jesus. Adam had faith in Satan. And Adam made the choice for Satan instead of Christ. There were two people in the Garden of Eden and Adam had the choice to make. Jesus and Satan. And Adam chose Satan. And Adam was not deceived. It was a deliberate choice. It wasn't eating. It was choice. Adam chose Satan and rejected Christ. Even though God told him that look, life, death, blessing, cursing, the choice is yours. God told him you have a choice to make. But Adam refused to make the choice for Christ. Even God said, choose life. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Adam rejected life and chose death. And because of his disobedience to God's word, he died. And because he died as the prototype of man, his death affected the human race. Are you with me here? So in the Garden of Eden, it was not about eating something. It was sin. The sin of rejecting Jesus and choosing Satan. That was what happened. But when Moses saw, Moses couldn't see disobedience. He couldn't see sin. He was busy seeing trees. I'm teaching.
teaching here. Those trees were all metaphors. The fruits were metaphors. They didn't exist. It was just a pattern. It was a figure trying to show you that there was, there was a choice that was made. Are you understanding? It's revealed to us by the Spirit. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Simple. How do we know that there was no tree in the Garden of Eden? Because Jesus, in the revelation of Scripture, which is the New Testament, said, it is not what goes into a man that defiles a man. So if Adam ate something, he, he wouldn't have been a sin. Because when you eat, you go to the toilet. When Adam goes to the toilet, whatever he ate will have gone out. So there will be no sin. But because it is what comes out of a man that defiles a man, so Adam, inside his heart, decided to disobey God. And that decision activated death. That decision activated death. And by that decision, death came upon man. And I have news for you. There was no snake in the garden. No snake. That's why people eat snake today. Snake is not Satan. That snake was a metaphor. That is why he is called the serpent. Let me show you a few scriptures so we can open it. Are you learning something? John chapter 8 verse 44. You are of your father the devil. And the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from. From where? Who is a murderer from the beginning? The devil. So Moses couldn't see the devil. He saw serpent. Because the devil was a mystery in the Old Testament. To be revealed in the New Testament. So Jesus was not talking that. Look it was not serpent. Satan was physically in the garden. It was Satan that entered Cain and used Cain to kill Abel. There was a Satan, not serpent. That's why it is not called a serpent. It's called the serpent personified. That means there was an actual personality called the serpent. But in actual interpretation, is the devil. But metaphorically, it was a serpent. But reality, he was the devil. He was the devil. He was not a serpent. He was a devil. Now remember we are still trying to demystify the cause. But we have to take care of all the elements around it. 1 John chapter 3 verse 11. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. 12. Not as Cain. Who was of that wicked one. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him. Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So Cain was of the wicked one. Now in Genesis, you will not see Satan walking through Cain. But now in the New Testament, it is revealed that the person that operated inside Cain to kill Abel was Satan. It was not just brother and brother hatred. There was a Satan behind the scene. Are you with me here? Another scripture, Corinthians. Paul was talking about this same Genesis event. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, as the serpent, not a serpent, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now Paul is saying it was the serpent. And he's talking about the devil here. The serpent, not a serpent. Somebody says, how? You know, Jesus was the first, I mean, Adam was the first Adam. Jesus is the second Adam. Is that true? Now listen, Adam fell. Adam must recover himself. So therefore, Jesus had to come as Adam to rescue man from the fall of Adam. So, first Adam fell, second Adam came to remedy first Adam. The second Adam is different from the last Adam. There are three Adams. Should I open it or leave it for tomorrow? No, I'm talking of the three Adams. You're sure you can carry it? 
You have capacity for I, I, I can open it. There are three Adams. First Adam is Adam in the Garden of Eden. Second Adam is Christ. Christ. The incarnate Christ. The incarnate Christ is the second Adam. The incarnate Christ called the only begotten son of God or called Jesus of Nazareth. The incarnate Christ. That is the manifested God in flesh. That's the second Adam. Now, that second Adam came to die. It is the death of the second Adam that gave rise to the last he is called the last because after him there is no more Adam. It's not the third Adam, it's the last Adam. The last Adam is the Lord from heaven, and the last Adam is the born again. The second Adam wasn't born again. It was the last Adam that was born again, which is Jesus, the born again man from the dead. Yeah, the risen king. And it is out of this last Adam that you are born. So you are part of the last Adam. You are you are the Adamic generation that is called the new creation. We are in Christ. Am I teaching here? Yeah. We are the we are the manifestation of sons. We are not servants. We are sons. We have revelation. We are born of the word. We know the word. We do the word. We are born of the word. We do the word. It is what gave back to you that you do. Are you here? We are born of the word. Somebody say, I am born of the word. Somebody say very loud, I do the word. Can I hear you shouting louder? I do the word. Loudest, I do the word. I do the word. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil. Who is the old serpent? So in the garden of Eden, who was operating? The devil. Wasn't a snake. So in case you like eating snake, don't be afraid. Go and eat it. Kill the team, put in support. Thank you, Jesus. Eat it with joy. It's not Satan. It's snake. Satan is the old dragon called the devil. So in the garden, there was no serpent. There was Satan. Yes, sir. Eh? In the garden, there was no tree, fruits, and leaves. There was disobedience. There was a wrong choice. Hallelujah. Who I'm teaching here. But Moses couldn't see that because Moses was operating by types and shadows. He was operating by figures and examples. He didn't have the real. But we have the real. So from here, we can look at what Moses couldn't see. And beyond what Moses saw, we can see the real thing. Hallelujah. We can see the real thing. The devil is no more a mystery. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Anywhere the devil is hiding behind the scenes and causing confusion around your life, I command him to stop. Somebody shout by revelation. Satan, I know how you function. I'm not ignorant of your antics and devices. By revelation, I speak to you in the light. You are bound. Stop. 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 Satan, stop. stop. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe the devil has heard you and he has stopped, I want you to jump on your feet and shout a powerful amen. amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit what is yours that the devil has been messing around with. He seizes in his maneuvers now. The darker the night, the brighter the light. There's a sound of confusion all over the world. All over the world. We hear of war, rumors of war, nation fighting, nation, cities fighting, cities. It is when it is dark for the world that it will be bright for the church. Because light is not good in the afternoon. Light becomes an asset in the night. The darker the world, the brighter the church. I came to announce to somebody as it is getting tough and getting dark for the world, your light will shine bright. Amen. When the world is confused and they don't know where to go, you will know where to go. Amen. When people don't have direction, you will have direction. Ah, 
listen to me let me speak to you by prophetic and apostolic audacity every area where you are struggling now i speak over you in the next few weeks by revelation rise above struggle i'm not hearing that amen rise above struggle rise above struggle rise above struggle by the power of the holy ghost where others are confused you are not confused you are in this world but not of this world as the world is confused receive direction receive solution receive answers know what to do when others are looking left right center and they are flabbergasted by situations of life and don't know what to do i declare today over you by the holy ghost you shall know what to do you shall know what to do when men are cast down and prophesy you will be rising high i'm not hearing that amen i'm not hearing that amen i'm not hearing that amen so listen carefully the cause that came on man through the earth was because he sinned so if it came through sin and you're no more in sin it means there is no more cause are you hearing the cause came because of what man did but what christ did overruled what man did so the repercussions that come with the cause we are taking in christ so now i prophesy over you by the power of the holy ghost every symptom around you that looks like a cause i wipe it out by the blood from this day because you have received grace you have received the gift of righteousness wherever you are as your two hands are lifted and your amen will come like thunder i say rain in life rain in life rain over challenges rain over turbulence rain over attacks rain over attacks rain over attacks rain over attacks where they have blocked you i command you to spring a surprise spring a surprise spring a surprise spring a surprise ah you have exhausted all your options i speak to you by the holy ghost receive heaven solutions you have exhausted every natural remedy you have extorted every natural solution as your hands are lifted you are not a natural man you are a spiritual man right now receive supernatural direction supernatural solution supernatural solution supernatural solution supernatural solution lift those hands and pray in tongues for another one minute everybody pray like a spiritual man open your mouth and pray in tongues Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Stop praying apologetically. Pray in tongues. You have light. You have light. You have light. Mango lobo shaka. Raya da bodaya. Jojo kula na mokotoka. Hege boza tala na mo. Hege bora na bola bola mona mo hodia. In the name of Jesus, can I hear that amen on the note of finality? The Holy Ghost say, ask them to pray for one another. So I like you to grab somebody and spray in tongues over him. Just pump him with tongues. Pray, pray for somebody. Just pray for somebody. Just pray for somebody. Pray for one another that you may be healed. You are born of God. Majota Lakota Malaga Labuda. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. Be strengthened with might in the inner man. Be strengthened with might in the inner man. Rise up higher and higher like an edifice. Win in life. Win in life. Win in life. Win in life. In, life. in the name of Jesus. 
lift those two hands to heaven, open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Prophesy, I am born of God. I overcome situations. I overcome in life. I am born of the spirit. I reign in life. I walk in righteousness. I live in the overcoming. Open your mouth and prophesy. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Hey! Solutions, directions, answers, 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 answers. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear that amen like thunder? Lord, thank you because it is done. Oh, it is done. We rejoice because it is done. And the scriptures cannot be broken. So we stand in this grace. We stand in this grace. We stand in this grace. And I declare for everybody here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of revelation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you my father. Sick bodies are healed. Sick bodies are healed. Sick bodies are healed. Sick bodies are healed. Somebody with a blood condition here right now has just been healed. 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 Migraine headaches are living right now. They are living right now. They are living right now. They are living right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, from your head to the soles of your foot, you are made whole totally released in the mighty name of Jesus everything is working for you favor is talking for you grace is speaking for you mercy is defending you in the mighty name of Jesus it is done it is done in Jesus mighty name we pray if you believe it let your amen come on a note of finality go ahead clap and rejoice and celebrate Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I know you have been blessed and impacted by that word today. Two things of importance. Please don't go away. Number one, make up your mind to get more people on the platform to be fed with the word of his grace. Invite, mobilize more people to join, you know, this platform to come in here and be fed with the word of his grace. Number two, if you do not have a church where you belong, a local church where you are fed with sound word, you want to join one of our campuses around the world. All you need to do is send me a mail today with your location and we will connect you with our campus closer to where you are. Lastly, if you want to start a campus, a Power City campus, it's an extension of our church where believers are brought together and where they feast around what I teach. They ask questions, the questions are answered and together they go out, get people saved and disciple and watch them grow. I mean, nothing makes a believer happy than to see that his life is changing other people's lives. That's the ministry given to every child of God, the ministry of reconciliation. Remember, he that ascended is he that descended, and he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of ministry. You are hearing all of these things, so you can do work of ministry. And this year, you must take advantage of everything you have learned and be a blessing to all of humanity. I'm expecting to hear from you today either to be a part of the campus or to start one. This year, we are flooding this whole earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. I love you guys. I'm excited. Looking forward to bring more word to you. And until then, enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen.